Welcome everybody to coinpicker.us. Go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button if I'm adding value to you. I record a video every single day with analysis that has been accurately predicting where the overall market is headed as well as some particular projects to invest in buy and sell as a matter of fact. Meaning sometimes you trade, sometimes you hold. I'm not I'm not one of those that says hodl everything. Hodl all the time, hodl, hodl. That's certainly okay with a portion of a position, but I can count multiple markets where if you do that over a long period of time, you just wind up losing money. And I think in the crypto market and the downward trend, which I'm gonna cover right here in a moment, um, I think trading a portion, not saying everything, and I'm not giving anybody financial advice, but trading a portion of your portfolio will provide substantial returns over just holding on and hoping and praying that all your projects recover. So here, here's the topic of today, and it is not exaggeration, meaning I've got some basis for these numbers. One is, how, you know, how would you like to turn $100 into $25,000? Maybe this year, but the odds are in a year or two. And this year, it could probably go to $100, somewhere in the neighborhood of five or 6000 I would say. It's pretty safe. But here's is, is the potential. Here's what it is. It's the one crypto project that will moonshot even in a down market. And we know it will because it already has been. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. Okay, we're in a down market. I've been talking about it since around here or so when we failed to get even close up to this level. Um, I posted a video just a little while ago, well, my vid previous video, where we had had a, a, a reasonable bounce and crested, in fact, let's go to a seven day and I'll tell you where it was, I posted the video. So it was on, we're on the 22nd. Yeah, it was right around, right in this area here, right about here. And we got a, a decent bounce, but it is of course resolved to the downside. I think we, according to all my indicators, we had a good momentum to power through. I could have easily seen us cresting up over, well, actually we, this was this was probably more the market cresting up over here everything was everything was in good trend in fact we're establishing a relatively nice uptrend higher highs higher lows it's a powerful uptrend that's beginning to develop which would allow us to eventually recapture um, the 700 territory and then beyond i think that's you know looks like it's got potential we got stopped with not fud which i interpret as you know the fear uncertainty and doubt i interpret fud as something that hasn't happened and we're just totally afraid of it now this happened the indian government stopped supporting or allowing banks to interact with exchanges and people dealing with bitcoin or cryptocurrencies in general that isn't fud that's just a fact and that took a lot of players out of the game it also served notice that other governments may take that kind of action so it was a real occurrence, not fear of or uncertainty of or doubt that an occurrence will happen. And I differ from a lot of channels in that I'm, I'm wide open to the facts of what's going on. I mean, if South Korea officially banned cryptocurrencies, it would have a deep and lasting impact. They haven't done it. So there's no point in, you know, assuming it is done. But India has. India has. And we have to acknowledge that. And that's, I think, what happened. I think that's what I mean, it just cut it off. Boom, right at the legs. Um, we were we were ready to crest. We had very good momentum. All my indicators said we were ready to go. The news hit, took a lot of players out of the table, added a lot of legitimate concern that other governments would take the step. And that's why we're trending down. Now, the, the good news is, the good news is that there seems to be really strong, strong support in this area. And I can imagine, based on my indicators, that we might continue climbing up. But let's take a look at the one coin that I'm talking about, the one coin, the one project that has already shown the ability to go counter trend to the total market and has a real claim on rising to levels we just can't even fathom right now. And I'll explain that. I'll explain that really quickly. It is Walton coin, Walton chain. I'm, I am a buyer of Walton chain. I bought it a while ago. I talked about it already. And I said, it's a great place to go. It's got a legitimate reason to establish value that is proprietary RFID patented RFID technology that is already got one of the largest customers in the world 
on board. Now, it's not, it's not a firm deal, but they are working together and more than likely will be a firm deal. It's also tied into the Chinese government. The big picture on Walton Chain is that I think Walton Chain could subsume what VeChain is doing, which has also been incredibly strong. In fact, I say VeChain is ready for a rest. It's already showing that on the EFI, and it's slightly overbought, though it could get more in the CCI. It's slightly overbought, but and, it, and buyers are still in control. So it's got an uptrend, but losing momentum in the uptrend, whereas W uh, Walton Chain, and this is what I wrote two days ago or something like that. I said it's uptrending, but it's going to slow, and it's not going to rise significantly from this point. And that's that's essentially what happened. Had a little bit more of a pop. I think when I wrote this, it was in the 28 range, went up to 29 something, and now it's steadying out and and maybe even dropping a little bit. But buyers are still in control. They're still positive. We are at a balanced state. Uh, well. That's not entirely true, come to think of it. Now that I look at it more closely, we're not in a balanced state. We, uh, we, do, have, um, we do have positive momentum nonetheless, but there was a trend change to look more uh, in, the down, in the down region for the CCI. So I, th I suspect we'll trend, I mean, based on my analysis, this says that whatever increase is slowing, but it's not turning sharply negative at all. And it looks like it's going to meet the 10-day moving average in the 20, uh, 0 0.22, 3, 0 0.23, 0 0.24, probably in this region. So I don't see a massive jump in Walton from here, but I don't see a dive at all. And I think there'll be plenty of opportunity to buy it. But VeChain is, in my book, and I have, let's see if I can get an R, a, a RSI and we'll, uh, we'll really know where we're standing on that. Uh, or the Bollinger Bands would be good too. I use a lot of different, a lot of different indicators. Let's see where on the Bollinger Bands. Yeah, we're right at the top of the Bollinger Bands. It looks to me like we're definitely going to get a bit of, a bit of a re reversal out of that. So let's take that out and take a look at another one uh, that I like a lot. Let's go to the Stochastic RSI. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, there we go, Stochastic RSI. Okay. Yeah, it has room in the stochastic RSI. It still has room to rise where it's madly overbought, madly overbought. So we do we may have a may have a bit of an uptrend, but it, it appears to me based on the CCI and the EFI that we are the tendency from here is that these two will meet somewhere, uh, probably towards the upper trend, six three ish, six three three. 623,000 Satoshi, something like that. Um, so I, I don't expect a rocket ship up here, and I also don't expect a massive drop, probably a little bit of a drop, because we are losing mo uh, buying momentum, but we're not turning into a selling frenzy either. So that's that's VeChain and Walton. They're both in the same sort of a space, although Walton doesn't. Walton's more general. VeChain is saying where well, we're going to we're going to track everything along the chain of supply and big businesses. Well, Walton already has the technology to do it. It's already getting one of the biggest customers out there. And and one of the other reasons I like Walton a lot more. Let's check it. Let's check at. Let's check the supply difference. Okay, <clears throat> one of the key things that will establish valuation of a of a currency or a project is yeah. This is what yeah. This is kind of what I'm saying. It's, it's got a downward trend or st or staying up or staying you know at a, in a mid mid range. It's not going to leap high. Twenty four million, twenty five million, call it with a total supply of seventy million. Okay, that's Walton. We're still under a billion. We're well under a billion. Okay, so we're seven hundred. 700 million total market cap. Let's take a look at VeChain. See how far VeChain has come. And how much, so the total supply is mm, 850 million. And the current is just you know, a little bit under 300 million. So you're talking 10X supply for VeChain, 10X. Their market cap is what? Three times what Walton is? So while VeChain is great, and I'm a, I think VeChain is a wonderful investment, it's not, not as good as Walton, in my opinion. So I'm all in on Walton. I'm big time all in on Walton. And where did I get those crazy numbers that we're talking about here? Turn $100 into $25,000. All right. What is the analogy to Walton in the current world, basically? It's a company called Oracle. Okay. Oracle mar Oracle markets Oracle's market cap is right around 210 
billion dollars. $210 billion. Let's take a look. Let's just confirm my knowledge. Yes, 209.381. It has a surprisingly a relatively low PE ratio. Let's take a look at what a crazy PE ratio these days is. Okay, nutsoid, off the chart, crazy PE ratio. Let's take a look at it. Okay. P ratio, 330. Okay, so Oracle is valued at $210 billion. They actually make a lot of money. Um, I mean, I think they still do. They usually do. And they're only valued at a 21 PE ratio, whereas P is price to earnings ratio. And Amazon is at 330. All right. Well, Walton does a lot of the same stuff that Oracle it does. Now, Oracle is much more established, much larger, has bigger footprint, has all kinds of contracts. Yes. Yes. But Walton has just snagged one of the biggest fish in the ocean of companies to work with, China Mobile. And Walton will continue to do that. And with the credibility, they already have working prototypes. They already have the software. They have loads of PhDs. Walton has the potential, in my opinion, to go from rapidly, I might add, seven hundred and seven hundred million dollars to ten billion market cap, and we'll take a look at some companies that have nothing but hopes and dreams. Vaporware, right? My favorite. Cardano is probably going to introduce a phenomenal product. Meanwhile, and it's not going to happen anytime soon. It could ha it could take as long as twenty twenty. That's what their funding is for, up to. Meanwhile, EOS is already about to introduce it. There are a number of other platforms that are out there. Neo, NEM, you name it. Lots and lots of platforms. Stellar is a platform. What are they worth? $15 billion on, well, the market cap. And, of course, that's not a real number because <clears throat> the reason it's not a real number is, let's say Cardano wanted to realize that entire market cap, get it into cash. They would start, they'd sell everything, and this would rapidly, the price would rapidly go down to near zero. So this, these are kind of a false number. Market caps are set at the margin. The last person in, last person out of buying and selling set the market cap. So it's not a real, it's, it's, it's not a real, real accurate picture, but it gives us a, a measuring stick. This has nothing out there in the market, no partnerships like that, just a lot of beards and ugly loafers and white papers. That's what Cardano is at this point. And it may, it may be the best thing ever, but it's just not, available. Whereas Walton has working products, has everything, and it's a tiny, tiny fraction of that value. So, I mean, it's 20x. So 20x to get it to that point, to $15 billion. And what would that do to a $100 investment? Well, it would take it to 2000 And that's just, I think it's a near-term thing. In fact, I think Cardano ought to drop down to a couple hundred million, and Walton should be up at 10, 15, 20 billion. But, but in talking the longer picture, which is two years ish, maybe something like that, three years, Walton, because things happen so fast in this market, Walton could have a date with the $200 billion market cap. And that would take $29, or let's just call it $100 as it is right now, $100 and turn it into just show you what I'm talking about so uh, if we take 210 billion right there we go lots of zeros and divide that by seven we're just gonna go 700 million okay 700 million right that's 300 X times your hundred dollars thirty thousand dollars I know that sounds crazy. I know this is all speculative, but there is some reasoning behind it. And the other aspect about this is, and this is why it's even higher than that, I think, is that Oracle is predominantly a U.S. corporation supported by U.S. funding. It is worldwide, has big international presence, but it's not a darling on the Japanese exchange or the Korean exchange or the European exchanges. Whereas Walton is now exposed to worldwide capital. If you were to go, if you were to compare the life cycle of Oracle versus the life cycle of Walton, Walton is way farther ahead in their life cycle 
of you know a very recent introduction. I mean, how lo how long have they been out there? I mean, no time at all. It says September is when it was relatively introduced. So just no time at all. So the bottom line is Walton has already established that even in a down market, it is capable of rising again. VeChain is doing that too. Huge projects like EOS are not. They've taken a pretty significant hit. Um, I mean, they've done well, and I think it's great, but it's nowhere near in the league, in my opinion, of Walton. That's why I'm very big on Walton, because it's a legitimate project, and it's one of my themes that I've been talking about, that in order to survive a downtrending market that has to recover its upward momentum, one, you can hold coins that, and projects that you believe in, and I, that's fine, and I've certainly done it some myself, but I think the the wisest and most profitable perspective is to look for the coins that are that have real projects, real intellectual capital, patents, things like that, real business partners that can bring in revenue and are tackling a problem that could become an enormous, enormous business. I introduced the concept of fiefdom value. Well, the fiefdom, meaning like a kingdom that Walton is going after, is one of the largest businesses in the world. It has 800 million customers, and it's tied into the Chinese government, which is basically the largest population to work with on the planet. So Walton is a rocket waiting to go absolutely supernova, even in a market that's heading down. So I'm just gonna encourage everybody to click subscribe, click like if you like, if you are getting a benefit out of my analysis, and also by predicting the markets and where they're heading and go to coinpicker.us, sign up for my list so that I can send you my trading ideas as well as the indicators that will allow you to have a way big leg up compared to anybody else who's just trying to scamper along and find the coins that'll, that'll rise in a day. I've already done the sifting for you. So thanks again, and I will talk to you tomorrow.